Welcome to Frost Astrophotography. So I saw on YouTube that Kiwi the Lazy Geek wanted some help in processing uh, an image of the Rosette Nebula. He provided the broadband and narrowband data. And since I'm not so very good at processing the broadband data, I thought I would take his narrowband data and see what I can do with that. Hey guys, Crave the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. Today I am making this video because I need your help. Okay, <laughs> and we'll this help. is with um, processing the Rosette Nebula. I decided to tackle the challenge from Qwid, the Lazy Geek, using his HSO narrowband data. I don't have a one-shot color camera myself at the moment. And I'm not really up to speed on the best approach to process such an image. However, Qiwib also stated that he had some problems with bringing out the colors in the center of the Rosette Nebula. So I thought I uh, would try his uh, narrowband data and see what I could produce. First of all, the three images that I downloaded from Qiwid looks like this. So obviously uh, we have some stacking issues here. So the first thing that I did was to use dynamic crop to crop out the center uh, based on the HA data here. So I did that and ended up with these three images, S2, O3, and HA. I also don't really like this rotation. I don't know why. So I did a vertical mirror flip on all three images to end up with something looking like this. I then followed my normal uh, processing workflow for an SHO image. And that includes uh, the uh, dynamic background extraction to try to even out uh, the background. I also did a linear fit using the HA frame as a reference frame and I ran Blur Exterminator instead of the normal deconvolution, since uh, that is my preferred process uh, in this part of the workflow. I noticed that I've gotten some mixed results using Noise Exterminator in linear mode versus nonlinear mode, even though it is recommended to be used in uh, linear mode. So I didn't really run noise exterminator. At this point, I rather did the uh, histogram transformation manually and stretched the images and then moving on to the non-linear phase of the processing workflow. Uh, the first thing that I did in uh, nonlinear mode was to run uh, the star exterminator process, separating uh, the stars from the nebulosity. I like to do this as a first step in the nonlinear mode so that I can uh, really process uh, the nebulosity separately from the stars and uh, not be affected by them. So the star exterminator works uh, perfectly. 
And when that uh, was completed, I ran the noise exterminator as well in nonlinear mode. And you can see that we have uh, a very good result. We can compare uh, the HA before noise exterminator and HA after noise exterminator. And you can see that there is a big difference here in uh, noise level in the two. Now we are moving on to the uh, interesting part. I did a normal combination of SHO using pixel math and ended up with a uh, picture image looking like this. Now, before moving on, I made a couple of color masks to be used later on to adjust the red and blue colors. So using the color mask script, uh, we can produce a yellow and cyan mask. And the cyan mask is used to manipulate blue and the yellow mask is used to manipulate the red color. And I also uh, ran some um, multi-scale linear transformation on my color masks to blur them out a bit. And these are the two masks that I ended up with. Next step is to run SCNR to remove some of the green color. I can demonstrate here by running SCNR. We can see that we already have a something that looks like the traditional SHO, but we have a lot of reddish color out here, and that is uh, some light pollution from the O3 filter, I would say. I also inverted the image and ran as in R again. and then inverted the image back. Now we have something that's starting to look like the colors that I want. Let me just uh, demonstrate how we can adjust the uh, colors using the color mask. Now you can see that the bluish is protected. We invert it back and we remove show mask and we can now open up curves transformation to really make this blue pop. We can use saturation to play with that. You can see that uh, we can uh, adjust saturation to really make it more bluish here. We can also adjust the blue color to make it more blue. If we drag it down, it's more of a green tur turquoise uh, color, but uh, we want it more bluish. So something like that. And also maybe adjust the saturation a bit to really make the colors pop out in the middle here. I also made a mask for the nebulosity here so that I could adjust the background separately from the uh, most visible nebulosity here. So that was actually a process that took me quite, quite a while and uh, I ended up with something looking like this in the end. Now I've also applied some sharpening and noise reduction to this as well as color corrections uh, in 
several different layers, I would say. But I'm feeling quite happy with this uh, result. And since I'm only using narrowband data and I'm not uh, really a fan of SHO stars, I'm uh, going to use the HA stars and I'm not going to reduce them any further because I've already run the uh, blur exterminator on this image. So the stars are uh, already reduced. So I used pixel math here to combine the HA stars with uh, this uh, SHO starless image. And this is the final result that I ended up with. So I've also adjusted the colors again a couple of times and I've adjusted the curves to increase the contrast in this image. So QEV, uh, this is my contribution. Using your SHO data and uh, I hope you uh, like it. Thank you so much for watching this video and as always give it a thumbs up if you like it and consider subscribing if you're not already doing so. If you want to support me and the work with these videos there is an option listed in the video description. Until the next video I wish you have clear skies.